What up? This is your boy, Doughboy, and this is the first installment of the Dobriety Files. What is the Dobriety Files? Um, anybody that knows me or is familiar with my content um, knows that I have a pretty, uh, pretty storied past with alcohol. I've talked about it openly um, over the years. Um, I did two stints in rehab. Um, I had 939 days sober coming into this year before I subsequently relapsed on June 17th. <clears throat> and what this vlog is about, what this segment is about, is just trying to find a way to, you know, live a sober life from alcohol. Um, it is very, very difficult. Um, and I guess, you know, it, it, what, I, what I wanted to gain from this is just to be able to open the conversation up on, on just different strategies. I mean, there was a lot of different things that I was able to learn that I do know how to use, you know what I'm saying? The tools that I know that, you know, that I learned in rehab and, you know, and, and that helped me get 939 days sober. So I just want to just be able to, and I, I uh, strategically am dropping these every Friday because, you know, the weekend is when everybody uh, does the majority of their uh, drinking. Oh, side note, before we go any further, please like the video, share the video, hit that subscribe button. Um, we trying to go all the way up and uh, get to this 20,000 uh, subs, uh, you know, very, very soon if we can. So what I want to talk about on this uh, episode is when I realized that I had a problem with alcohol, and then I'll definitely give an update on where I'm at sobriety wise with all of that good stuff. Okay, cool. So um, me and alcohol, I, I didn't really, I never really drank at all in my 20s or in my teenage years. I just never was into it. Like I kind of had seen, you know, my, my, my dad had suffered with alcohol and, um, and I knew that the men on his side of the family, you know, had some issues with alcohol. So I just kind of seen how it was just like destructive of people's lives. And plus I never really liked the taste of alcohol. I'd be like, Ugh. So, um, twenties, I really didn't, I really didn't, you know, drink. I didn't really start getting into drinking I started to do comedy, but it really kind of kicked up when I moved to LA. Um, that's like when I was, you know, starting to drink the hard stuff. Um, over the next four years, like I would just do a lot of drinking just to cope. Like, you know, when you move to LA and you're trying to make it out here, you're trying to make a name for yourself. It could be very, very stressful. It could be very, um, you could just worry and you, you start to believe that you drinking is is helping you, you you know cope with anything and it, it really isn't and so you know and then a lot of times like i would drink to like get on stage to kind of like chill out with the nerves but mostly that's like when i started to drink alone at home and i would just get super emotional i have like a very tumultuous childhood that you know i i, I have unresolved issues there so i would just like just drink and just get sad and just reminisce about stuff it would just be a mess like i would get drunk i would just you know, listen to gospel music and cry. It was just like really, you could, you could tell that it was just emotions there that I, that I hadn't dealt with. But when I seen it, really, when I knew that alcohol was a problem was after weight loss surgery and like when I couldn't stop. And what I mean is like, I'll never forget because um, I used to drink so much to where, like I used to drink daily. It was a daily practice, like every single day. And like, this was back, so I'm talking like circa 2015. I get the, I got the, the weight loss surgery January 8th. And they told me like, this could turn you into an alcoholic, da, 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 da. I wasn't listening. I was being foolish, not listening to doctor's request. Um, so I would want to say like, I started, okay, I got the January 8th. I want to say by March, I was just drinking daily. Like, in like a bottle. And the thing was, that cut 80% of my stomach off. So I didn't even have a full stomach, but I'm drinking a full bottle. Because that was the thing. I couldn't eat food like that, for real, for real, because of the surgery. But I could definitely drink. Like, I could drink like a fish. The day that I knew it was a problem, I'll never forget. I remember because, for whatever reason, something was up in my car, and I had to take the train. And I used to work downtown LA. I remember getting on the train... And it was like six o'clock and I had drink. And I remember my hands started shaking 
And I remember like I just broke out in this complete hot sweat. And it was just my body because I hadn't had no liquor that day. It was at that point I was like, yeah, this might this might be a problem. There was other things that happened, you know, you know, along the time that, you know, like I remember when I went to rehab the first time, like falling into a uh into the into the toilet in my bathroom and hitting it so hard it came out the ground. And so a girl I was dating at the time, like, bro, you need to need to go to rehab and so this is this is another thing that i want to say though and this is i think i'll title this and this is like the point that i want to talk about because this is what i was able to learn getting sober for other people will never work i am living proof it it, it doesn't matter the first time i got i got sober and i went to rehab i did it to save a relationship with a woman the second time I went to rehab, which was the successful time that I, you know, I did it to save a job. There was, there was, they had sent somebody in there to fire me. And I'm sitting there thinking like, man, if he don't fire me, I'll go to rehab. But it was only to save my job. I, I didn't really think I was an alcoholic. Like, like even as recent as a couple of months ago, I still was like, I'm not an alcoholic. I just like to drink. If you try to do it for other people, it never works because it has to be for you. This is the first time I'm getting sober for Anthony. It's not for nobody. I can't even say it's for my kid or it's for my family. No, no, no. It has to be for you. At least that's what I believe. And so now that's just kind of where I'm at with it. It's like nobody's forcing me to do this. Nobody's telling me that I have to or they're going to leave. It's just like, no. And it's like, it's, it's a fight. So this is now let's have an update on my current sobriety. Uh, I don't have the best of news. Today is day, day one. I get it. Y'all like, what? You just have 14 days. I don't know that I want to count the days anymore, but let me explain how this happened, right? I stopped drinking on December 10th of this year. And I was like, man, I would just love to go into the year with 21 days. So that'd be dope, right? I put out the song, It Is Done on Christmas, okay? And then with it, I'm like, I'm celebrating 15 days of sobriety, da 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 The next day I drank. I don't know why. I remember it was a Saturday. It was just last Saturday. I remember sitting there the whole day and there was just, I was just bored. I was doing nothing. I was sitting at the house. That's dangerous. And see, that's what the pandemic does to us. It a lot of times, like I just be at that like over the last six months, because you know what I mean. Like I haven't been doing content. Like I haven't. Like I don't work a nine to five job. It's just like a lot of times you just be bored. You got to stay busy. The idle hands will do you every time. And I remember sitting there, and then it was just like all you need is just that one voice in your head. Like oh man, like man, you can have a drink. Ain't nobody looking. Ain't nobody gonna know. Man, who cares, man? Like you have you. Obviously, you're not an alcoholic. You just went 15 days without drinking. And so I drank. I didn't I didn't go crazy. And this whole last week, I didn't go crazy. I was drinking much less than, than I had been. Like, if before it was a fifth, I'm drinking half of that. And then maybe not even, and it wasn't every day. And so then yesterday, I this is this is the, the rash. Now, first of all, and I know I'm bouncing all over the place about this, you know, with, with sobriety. Another thing that you have to understand is that alcohol, alcoholic logic is never going to make sense. You ain't supposed to drink. You shouldn't drink. Nothing that you are ever going to say is going to make it the right reason to drink. This is how I rationalize it in my head. This is how addicts really will sell, be the buyers and sellers of their own BS. I'm, I'm very, I'm very guilty of that, right? So I told myself, this, this is how I made it make sense. For me to be able to drink last night. Mind you, I didn't even drink a lot. I drank like a little pint of Jack Daniels. Just the baby bottle. Just, um, of course, we're trying to be 100% sober. But what, like I told you guys, what I'm not going to do is come up here and lie. And I'm doing this vlog in an attempt to stay sober. So this is day one, okay? But I'm doing this in an attempt to stay sober this entire year. It starts with one day. So in my mind, I rationalized and said... It didn't even make any sense. But how I made it make sense to me. I said, though, 
You relapsed in 2020. Go ahead, have your last drink in 2020 and start the new year. I know it doesn't make sense. I know. Alcoholics, we make excuses after excuses after excuses. I know that that was dumb. It didn't make any sense. There's no logic in alcohol, alcoholic logic. There's no, it didn't make sense. You got to know that you can't drink. But I did it. I went to sleep and I woke up and I said, okay, now I'm ready to change. That's behind me. I got up this morning. This is my second thing of water. I already had a workout. Workout, definitely. I had to write a schedule. Like, I need structure in my life to keep me away from the bottle. If, because if I'm not, and that's another reason why I said I want to create content every day. Because if I can create content every day, then I can stay sober every day. So really me doing so much different type of content is me trying to keep myself busy so I don't go back down the trappings of drinking. What are some of the strategies that I have used to stay sober? I don't, when I had the 939 days of being sober, I, I planned out everything. I never put myself in a position where I was going to be tempted. Now, being in a pandemic, that does actually help in our favor because like, you know, the comedy clubs ain't open, like the clubs and you know what I'm saying? So a lot of the places where you would be tempted to drink ain't even open. But a lot of the places that you would go to to help you ain't open either. AA meetings ain't happening anymore. At least I don't think that they are in person because for obvious reasons. Um, the gyms are closed, you know what I'm saying? The You know, a lot of the different things that can take you out. Because that's the when I was when I was having success, it was like just stay out of the house. And it was cool because... I was working at the time. So eight hours of the day I'm working, two hours I'm getting to and from work. That's 10 hours. I mean, that's, yeah, that's 10 hours off the rip of the 24. I got to sleep eight. So now it's just trying to, how do we get through that, 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 that dead spot between six and when I go to sleep to hit the pillow dry? I would, I would negotiate with myself. I'd be like, all right, though, if you really want to drink, that's cool, but wait till tomorrow to do it. And then when tomorrow would come, i say the same thing. So it was like I would always kind of be telling myself that. Um, don't put yourself in compromising positions. You're always going to lose. You will lose every time. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's just better to say, I can't do this. And this is another way that I looked at it. I, I, I came up with an analogy recently. Because like, like, like most alcoholics, we always want to just steer the conversation around to how can I get a drink though? You know what I'm saying? But I had to just tell myself this. If I had a, I know people with peanut allergies, right? I don't see them being like, oh man, I, I just want to try to eat a Snickers on the weekend. No, because they know if they eat peanuts, their throat's going to swell up and they could possibly die. So now I want to just start looking at alcohol like I'm allergic to it. Because even though it might not be as sudden and quick as my throat's swelling up and I'm dying right there, I know it's going to be like death from a thousand cuts. I know I'm going to be less efficient as an alcoholic. Like sometimes you got to be able to just tell yourself the truth. I know that I can't drink in no moderation at all, period. But what I also learned is you can't be too tough on yourself too. Like, look, this is hard. I, I, I have never really been perfect at anything in my life. I've lost over 200 pounds. I ate terrible a million times and skipped workouts a hundreds of times. But with alcohol, it's such like a, you know, and, and I really believe when I lost that 939 days of sobriety that it just really got it. Oh. I know like when I lost the 939 days, I just felt like such a failure. And so that can, can be counterproductive too. But when I was counting the days, like that was worse. So whatever, like it's different things that work for people. You got to just be able to find out what works best for you. I don't feel like it's a one size fits all. Like, cause like the first time I got sober, I went to, I went to AA when I was in rehab, but I didn't go when I got out. I was like, I don't really need it. But now I would be open to going to AA, but you know, unfortunately it's not. I think I've, I've been hearing that they're doing some Zoom meetings. AA, I may have to to look into that. But um, so what is my plan now? My plan is to not drink today. And that's the best advice I can give everybody. I never looked outside of the day that I was in and in, in getting sober. 
I just always focused on that day. And then sometimes I even broke it down in fractions. Like right now, it's literally 12.57, right? I'm just like, no, just make it till five o'clock without drinking. And then once I get to five, it's like, all right, cool. Can we make it to 10? Because I'm going to try to go to bed by 11. You know what I'm saying? What can I do to make sure I'm busy? Like I got an interview at three o'clock, so I'm going to be doing that. Like I got different things to just stay busy, but just stay in the day. And all you got to do is just hit the pillow dry tonight. That's the only thing. I would love to come back here on the second episode of, of, um, of Dobriety and be like, yo, I made it a week. Boom. And now, like, my new sobriety day being 1-1-21, I'm like, all right, cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to stop the excuse making, um, be real about the situation, and um, do my due diligence to make it. That's really all it is. It's just, how do we get out? Because this is something that I'm going to deal with for the rest of my life. I will be a recovering alcoholic forever. We can't change that. You see what I'm saying? So then it's just like, all right. I'm just trying not to drink today. And that is the best advice I could give anybody. If I could give anybody advice for anything, just make it through the day. Focus on the day you are in. I, I really want to start adapting that to other areas of my life too. Like even like with working out and, and, and writing and different things. Like that's just, just, just control the day, man. Just control the day. Do what you got to do to not drink today. That's it. Like, I didn't get 939 days overnight. It was hard. You see what I'm saying? I, it was a it was a long, that's a long, that's almost three years, bro. You know what I'm saying? So now it's just, I'm, I'm back to the basics. Structure helps. Knowing where every minute of your day is going. Because I promise, even if it's just, I'm going to sit down and chill and watch TV. Because I promise you, if you got too much, what they say, uh, I don't mind is the, is the devil's playground, something to that effect. If, if, if you start having that conversation with yourself about if you should do it, that's a dangerous conversation. Just know that it's no. I have to tell myself, Anthony, you can't do this at all. But at the same time, I can't just go haywire ballistic on myself if I make a mistake. Because I am human. And human beings make mistakes. And this is something that is clinically a disease of the mind. It's like, I, sometimes I think people just think that alcoholics just can say, have a say. So I, I guarantee you, anybody that's an alcoholic don't want to be one. That is, that is, that is a, an addiction to a, a, a controlled substance. It's really like a malfunction of your brain. So I'll be happy to, to give myself grace because over this year, it got so dark. I... I mean, you know, and I've touched on this before, like when I was having the suicidal thoughts, and I didn't mean to laugh when I said that, but I, you know, I guess it's just a, you know, defense mechanism when I talk about serious things. I think when I, when I had the legit suicidal thoughts, it was like, because I felt like such a failure for letting not only myself down, but whoever else I aspired down. And I was just way too hard on myself. And, and being too hard on yourself can have you right back into abusing alcohol on a regular basis. Yeah, you can hold yourself accountable, but be nice to yourself. Understand you're fighting a fight and it doesn't get cleared up overnight. And I think that because I just could not get over the fact that I had lost 939 days sobriety and I thought that I would turn back into the same alcoholic that I was 939 days ago, I started to turn back into him. I started to go back to drinking all the time. I started going back into the, you drinking so much, now you blacking out. Now you saying a bunch of dumb stuff to people. Like I, all of those different things and that I didn't like about my life were starting to come back and they were familiar and I didn't like it. You know what I'm saying? It was it was wreaking havoc, you know, on my relationship. You know what I'm saying? I'm a father. My daughter is seeing me, you know, do this to myself. It's a terrible role model in that regard. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Upsetting people. You know what I'm saying? Because nobody wants to deal with drunk dope boy. I don't even want to deal with drunk dope boy. But in order to, to get sober dope out here, it's got to be a lot of self-love. See, a lot of this stuff, it's it's. they say by the time you relapse and have that drink, you already made the decision a long time ago. The, the drinking of it is just a physical manifestation of it. So I got to start remembering how good my life was when I didn't have this there. 
I gotta remember that, oh yeah, I was killing it. I, life was good. I wasn't having a lot of the issues that I've had this year because the alcohol was just gone. And plus now when you're dealing with a mental diagnosis of being bipolar, like them is just two things that really shouldn't be mixed. And I noticed that too, because I was thinking everything was just a bunch of bipolar. I was like, this is the bipolar, this is bipolar. No, it's not because you didn't get drunk every day. That's not healthy. People don't, and this is the biggest thing you got to also understand about alcohol. It is a depressant, y'all. Its primary function is to depress you when it gets into your body. Who wants depressive thoughts? Who really wants to just be sitting there just sad and all? Nah, bro. So that's, that's, that's where we're at with it. I know that I bounced around an entire lot, um, but I tried to keep it, you know, and we'll definitely play with this format. I definitely want to uh, open this show up to have guests on and stuff. Just people that are living a sober life. Um, because I feel good um, today. I feel good that I haven't drank today. Like, and, I, and I'm so glad I didn't get super hammered yesterday. Because if I did, I know that I wouldn't have got up. I know I wouldn't have had the motivation to work out. And I just know that it just wouldn't have. We wouldn't. I probably wouldn't even be doing this video. You know what I mean? So there it is. Just one day at a time. One day. I'm not asking for nothing. I'm just saying, hey, let me just get this day under my belt. I'm not worried about nothing. And I know some of y'all might hop in the comments and, oh, you already relapsed. Listen, man, listen, I don't, I don't care what anybody got to say about that because I know how difficult this is. But I also know that I can do it because I have God pushing me in this. God can deliver you from anything. Don't, don't ever get this misconstrued. So I know how powerful my God is and I know how pow powerful my mind is. So it's not really now about can I do this? It's am I going to do this? And yes, and why am I going to do this? Because I'm doing it for the right reasons. I just talked about self-love. That's not an act of self-love pumping a, a, a fifth of, of poison into your body on a nightly basis. That's not an act of self-love. That's not behavior exemplatory of somebody who loves themselves, especially if I know that alcohol has ruined situations, ruined opportunities, ruined relationships. It's nothing positive that's coming from it. And I know that. So there's no reason for me to even to jive and just even entertain it at all in any capacity. But in going through it, it has to be something where, you know, we just don't beat ourselves too much up. We don't beat up ourselves too much when we slip. Yeah, I slipped again yesterday. I wish that I wouldn't have, you know? I wish that, I wish I could have brought the new year in with 21 days. And it sucks that I have to come in with one. But you know what I'm saying? I'm going to get this one and I'm going and I'm going to celebrate. When I wake up in the morning, I'm like, yeah, you did that. Let's see if we can do it again. So that's all I would say to anybody that's struggling with alcohol. Just stay in the day. Just win the day. Just just win the day. You ain't gotta you ain't gotta say you're gonna stay sober for the rest of your life. Like, okay, that's always the goal. But just can you put yourself in a position to not do it for one day? And then if you do that and you can close your eyes and hit the pillow dry, God willing, the next time your eyes open, then just try it again. And that's with anything. And then it gets easier. Like it gets easier. I know that. I know that after that. 21 days. That's why. That's the one reason I was kind of ticker. They say 21 days to make a break of habit. I'm like, man, I could have been right there. But hey, it's okay. Because now I can get that on the 21st. Lord willing. And I could, you know, 1 21 21. That'd be cool. You know what I'm saying? Then your body stops craving it as much. Then you, you know, it just all, it, it all comes back. And that's the thing I know. I believe in everybody even out there watching this. If you got somebody that's suffering with this, just, just ask them, can they get one day so Just can you get one day? And definitely be careful too, because alcohol withdrawal is a real thing. And if you have been drinking the way that I have been drinking, just stopping cold turkey can be hazardous to your health. So make sure that you, you know, you, you, you're watching that. Like, you know what I'm saying? But um, that has been the first installment of the Dobriety Files. Please feel free to hop into the comments. Let me know. Um, how, what, what are some of the strategies you guys are using to stay sober? Um, you know, any tips that y'all may have for me? Any questions y'all got or, you know, any 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 suggestions on how we can open up this conversation to be better? I'm all here for it. Like I said, man, this content that I'm bringing to you guys, 
I want you to like it. So interact with me. I want to create this to the point where it's, you know, it's it's a good look every time. Like, that's the thing. I'm still, hopefully my computer is, it gets out the shop. So, you know, we can start doing some music and stuff on some some other things. But, um, yeah, this was the first the first episode of the Dobriety Files. I definitely feel good about it. And um, I'm excited to keep it going. So keep tapping in with me. We're going to keep just staying in and trying to win the day. That is all I can I can say. That's all I can guarantee. And that's all I can really, you know, commit to. And then tomorrow morning, I can commit to that day. But, you know, just that overly commitment and say, oh, I ain't finished. Man, listen, I'm trying to stay in the day. And this is just all honesty for me. What, what y'all not going to get is some dude coming up here, lying in front of y'all, telling you I'm sober, drinking on the low. No, 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 no. Because this is something that I'm trying, I'm going to be dealing with this for the rest of my life. So this should be a weekly piece of content that I have. And y'all going to always know where I'm at with it. And I'm always going to keep it on Honda. You feel me? This has been your boy, Doughboy. I will see you guys next Friday for another installment of the Dobriety Files. And Lord willing. I will have seven days of sobriety the next time we see uh, me on this piece of content. Okay? Peace.